Hey everyone, welcome to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, covering Supercomputing 2023 from the Maya High City, Denver, Colorado. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Nicholson. Dave, this is my first Supercompute. You were here last year, I'm so excited. Yeah. To learn about what's going on in HPC, quantum, AI. We're going to have some great conversations the next three days. Looking forward to it, looking forward to it. We've got an alumni back with us. We have Shreya Shah, the Portfolio Manager at Dell Technologies, and another Dave. We've got a two Dave quota set here, Dave King, the co-founder of Denver Data Works. Welcome, both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Shreya, talk to us about the state of the market today. There's, it's, it's, to say it's dynamic is a massive understatement. What are some of the things that you guys are seeing, and then we'll get into the partnership with Denver. Absolutely. Yeah, one of the biggest trends that we're seeing in the industry right now is that um, the power needs are going up significantly. And this is primarily because of TDPs or thermally dissipated power for silicon um, that is exploding, right? So when we say silicon, we're talking about CPUs, we're talking about GPUs. And what we're seeing across our customer set is that we have folks that are sitting at single digit kilowatt per rack power. And there's a spectrum, and at the high end of the spectrum, we've got f folks that can support north of 100 kilowatts per rack. And so, you know, as we think about being able to harness the power of AI, and as the, those computational needs grow, um, we're seeing that there is a deficit in the, the demand versus the supply from a data center aspect cooling, power, computational needs. And so in the next couple of years, we're seeing customers quickly trying to pivot their infrastructure to be able to realize and be able to productize, be able to support these in their data centers, whether it's existing or you know, new, colos, whatever that may be, right? Um, and so this data center um, journey or transformation, call it evolution or revolution, wherever you may be, that's already in effect. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it as data center dot next. And so how, do, uh, how does Dell and Denver Data Works come together to help answer and solve some of these problems that are emerging so quickly is what we're really excited about. Dave, give us a little bit of a backstory on Denver Data Works. Ironically, DENVR, we're, we're in Denver, so I thought I got to bring That's out right. that it's irony right there. Denver but you're based and Denver in, and Dave and Dave, right? Yeah, so but you're based in Alberta, correct? We are based, we're a Calgary, Alberta based company what in Western is Canada. Mission Vision, what was the catalyst to launch the company back in 2017? Yeah, so five years ago as we founded the company, we realized this collision course was setting up. The compute's getting hotter, it's getting faster, and for AI, you need clusters of computers. Right, so the single server isn't a thing anymore, right? You actually need to train AI models. You need hundreds of servers in some cases. So as you put that pressure on the infrastructure to now put hundreds of very hot computers, we started to look at the infrastructure and figure out where could we go to make a difference. And Shreya, talk about the, why Dell has chosen to partner with Denver DataWorks to really tackle some of the challenges and address the trends that you're seeing. Well, it, it comes down to partnership. Um, you know, if we, again, if we look at our customer set, there's a huge breadth of, of who we need to support. We want to provide um, flexibility. We want to provide diversity. Diversity in terms of silicon choice, diversity in terms of your interconnect, um, the diversity in terms of being able to meet the customer in their journey wherever they may be. And so, when we think about partnership and that last mile, or how do we actually make everything work end to end, this is where we're very excited to, to work with um, Denver DataWorks. You mentioned that uh, you're not talking about just single servers doing these things. You mentioned interconnect. Um, there are a lot of folks who are talking about this as the connectivity-centric era, mm -hmm. uh, right alongside the GPU, CPU, et cetera. In, you know, in, in importance of those things. So, you're setting up very, very complex environments. You are partnered with Dell, building world-class technology. That technology could be deployed in someone's data center. What's the pitch for relying on your expertise instead of having people rack and stack it in their own data center? I assume Dell is, Dell is fine either way. We're hearing from a lot of CIOs and CTOs that they just don't have the time to do that. 
Right. That, you know, it's, it's the, call it the FOMO, fear of missing out factor, call it the desire for time to market. Uh, but talk to us about the value proposition yeah. that you're bringing, because yeah, in theory I could cobble it together on my own, right? Yeah, but it's hard. Right, it's complex. So what Denver's done is we focused on a hybrid approach where we can bring the data center to your data. So one of the CIO's challenges is also security, right? Sovereignty of their data. If I have healthcare data or something, do I want to send it up to the cloud or somewhere? I'm probably not even allowed to. So what we've done is we've built modular data centers that are fast to deploy. And we offer them as a service so they don't have to get into the large capital expenditures and get into worrying about where their data is going because we're bringing the cloud to them. So in a modular way, we bring things forward and there's an environmental angle. We've built our data centers so they don't use water, for example. So there's something completely different that we're moving towards. And in the meantime, we're also deploying extremely large clusters with Dell. Um, and Dell Professional Services because it's tough to put these things together. We're deploying large clusters in Houston, for example, with extremely large language models being trained there on traditional data center clusters, all put together with the shared expertise. Over time, we'll bring those to you instead of you coming to the data center. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, so is this, so um, are these, would you consider these multi-tenant or single-tenant environments or a combination of the it, two? It's a combination, yeah. So okay. we offer a cloud as a service, right? So it'll be multi-tenant environment where you're running on an NVIDIA SuperPod, for example, uh, and there could be others sharing it with you or it could be your own. So it's very flexible. So we build it in a flexible way so you can come and go. And to make it work, with all the pressure that there is on the application set, um, we follow all the best practices and standards. Right, so this is an enterprise grade solution, not typically something that most companies have the ability to build themselves. It's, it's hard. Shreya, share the impetus or the catalyst for Dell engaging with Denver DataWorks. Was that, was that a customer driven, you talked about meeting customers where they are in this journey, in this transformation, in this revolution. Was that customer driven? I think there's, there's a lot of factors, right? Um, one of the things that, and I go back to this, this data center transformation, um, one of the capabilities that uh, Dave and team have kind of brought to light is immersion cooling, okay? Um, if we look at the, the journey that customers typically take, you have uh, your free air cooling that you start with, um, much more from a, a simpler way to deploy. Then you have your lack or liquid assisted air cooling, which is self-contained cooling within the node. You have open lack, which is um, self-contained cooling within the CDU, the central distribution unit, or cooling distribution unit. And then you have your rear door heat exchanger where you know, you're starting to do the plumbing for your facility water. And that's where it gets very, very complicated. And then you get into your you know, liquid cooling, hybrid and air, complete liquid cooling, and then you have your immersion cooling. And so that spectrum and the breadth that we have to provide to the customer with the MDC capability and with the immersion cooling capabilities, we're very, very excited that we can service the customers not just at the, the low end, the mid end, but also at the high end. That breadth is impressive. Yes, significant. So we always do our due diligence before coming in and talking to, to folks in this context. You have a PhD and her job title is Immersion. Yes. And I will freely admit that I looked at that and I thought, huh, I didn't know what that meant, and now I do. <laughs> yeah, so, a so Amy Short is fantastic, right? And yeah. she is, in fact, a PhD, she's a chemist, as much as she is a technician and a technical expert, and so Amy runs our immersion plans because we absolutely submerge Dell servers, right? They're swimming in the hot tub, and we cool them that way uh, without the use of water, and it's a place where we can get, you mentioned some rack densities in your opening piece. Um, today, we've been running for 15 months with zero hardware failures in immersion at production scale, um, and we can run sort of 150 kilowatts a rack easily, and our technology can cool another 30 or 40% above that for the next generations of whatever's going to be launched next year by NVIDIA and AMD and Intel and Dell, right? We're ready for it from an environmental and a cooling perspective. From an environmental perspective, a cooling perspective, share with us some of the main customer pain points or challenges you guys together are taking off the table. Do you want to go first? I can, I can go first, sure. I, I mean, a lot of the data centers can't handle the heat. 
right? So literally, you can only put one or two of these brand new servers. The Dell XE9680 is one of our favorite products. We've been buying uh, hand over fist from Dell this year, as many as we could get, actually. Um, and so you can only put one or two of those in a rack. So think of a seven foot high rack, and there's only two servers in it because the building can't handle any more heat density than that per square foot. And so you're running out of refrigeration power because air just doesn't move enough. So you can't put three or four or five or 10. In our racks, we put 16 side by side wow. because of our capability. So you're going from sort of two in this space of this table to 16 in the space of this table. And so that's a problem because to run a large language model, you may need 1,000 servers. Okay. So now you need a football field size building with seven or 800 racks for all the networking, connectivity, and the servers. So we take a football field and we compress it down into something that's under 900 square feet. And so there's some pain points there for a few things, right? Sure. It's expensive to operate a football field size building like the auditorium we're in today uh, and try to keep things cool. And so we, found, we think we found a better way. Anything that you would add, Andrea, in terms of the challenges that you're really knocking yeah. off the table? Yeah, I think with this generative AI craze, um, everybody wants to harness the power of AI, like I said. Uh, but that's actually in, 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 in conflict with some of our carbon emissions, the, you know, the, the reduction and the goals that we have. So how do we bring those together? And I think there's a lot of innovation in this space that will help us get there. One of the things that you know, we've talked about, and I believe you know, we talked about this previously as well, is the heat capture. How do you optimize that? And then how do you reuse that um, so that you have that circular, you know, um, loop that you can sort of minimize your footprint as, as you're going up in your, your um, uh, co computational so you needs. want to be able to grow some strawberries as well. <laughs> Actually, greenhouses are, are one of those first, I'd say, um, look into how can you recycle that energy, how do you re reuse that energy, but you know, the sky's the limit here. How, you know, how yeah. can you power your, or how can you cool your, um, your industrial, you know, systems and, and, and you know, your buildings and, and houses and, and pools and whatever that may be. Well, Dave mentioned hot tubs earlier. I imagine that the natural solution would be to just have like a spa <laughs> on the outside wall <laughs> of the data center. It would be perfect. A little less Good secure idea. environment, yeah. but yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly, who knows, right? Just, we'll, just we'll see what the future holds. Think, think of, on, on the surface, think of how inefficient it is to heat a hot tub with GPUs. <laughs> <laughs> However, yeah. with, with the extra latent heat. But so, yeah. that's a, so it's a very serious consideration when you talk about heat dissipation. Mm -hmm. And it's not as simple, if I'm hearing this right, it's not as simple as, well, I have a data center, I've got a raised floor, I have power, I have cooling. Maybe I'll just rack this stuff up. Yeah. It's not that simple, if I'm hearing correctly. That's exactly right. The because densities it's, you can deliver. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classic engineering and physics problem. Air can only move so much heat. So does that then mean that, um, you know, we've seen this move, this mix of IT infrastructure being deployed on premises and in the cloud or off premises, however you want to define that. Do you think that AI and the sort of the wind behind the AI sales is going to drive more people because of dynamics like this to do things as a service? Will, are you seeing at Dell as a service the default method for folks seeking to do modeling yeah. to start out? Or are you seeing it hybrid still? What's, what's, you know, I know you, know, you can be the arms dealer and provide to partners hardware that you build, and that could be a mix of directly to customers through partners, but what, what, are, what are you seeing yeah. in that regard? I, I don't think the answer is either or, it's an and, and it's a hybrid, right? Depending on your workload and where you are in that journey, because training doesn't necessarily have to be the largest model size you could be doing some fine tuning or you could be doing some training with much smaller models. And depending on you know, some of the things that, that Dave brought up, security, yeah. um, HIPAA for example, right? Um, that will force you to consider a hybrid approach. And I think going forward, that's really not going to change. And so how do you make them work together is going to be the key to success. That makes let's, sense. Let's talk about sustainability. We can't have conversations about power <laughs> and cooling and heat dissipation <laughs> without really understanding how you can enable organizations to, what's your vision for sustainable AI in the future? Question to both of you. 
Yeah, I think uh, from a Denver point of view, we focus on a few things. One of them is water use, right? Outside of the carbon neutral and net zero and all the other slogans, um, data centers use a lot of water, right? And you can loop it around a few times and do other things, but at the same time, when you pull water from an aquifer or a river, it's no longer in the aquifer or in the river, right? It's, it's now gone to a different place. So we've really focused on that as one of the key things. And then energy efficiency and land efficiency. Right, if you imagine, it's a little different in North America, or a little easier here with more land, but if you imagine um, Europe and massive million square foot data centers, right, the density of people and land and their, uh, the environmental conscience there, right. this is a real challenge for them to join the AI wave uh, and this technology set because it's hard to build football field sized data centers yeah. that meet the new environmental regulations everyone's focused on. So for us, it's a whole package, right? It's a combination of things, including right down to land use. What's the most efficient use? That's a great uh, point. Should we put a bunch of servers all over the place? Or can we compress that in some way? Yeah. Right? I don't know that Denver has all the answers for that, but at least we're trying, right? We're taking a shot at it. Yeah, and, and what you're doing isn't happening, obviously, in a vacuum. Uh, you know, Dell is doing work to optimize hardware. You're optimizing at the data center layer. But if you look at it holistically, the hope is that yes, we're using resources, we're using energy, that's going to drive carbon up. However, if the insights gained by doing the work with AI prove to be what we believe they will be, the efficiencies gained are going to be able to drive carbon down in other areas that you may never ah. personally be aware of. That's right. right. So you've got data scientists and teams working on things and what you know is, wow, my data center is nearly on fire, but since it's not on fire, we're <laughs> doing a great job. <laughs> but what you don't know, maybe, is that they are, in fact, doing material science mm -hmm. that could not have been done otherwise, that is transforming the way that other production things are being done. So I like to be an optimist yeah. in that regard. Feel free to join well, me. Well, sure, right? Because, <laughs> yeah, there's the, the Terminator view of AI, right? Right. Is that a problem? Right. Uh, or is AI a beneficial thing and there's AI for good, right? And we're on your side of the optimism side. We want to make sure that it's also good for the planet and its resources, right? So we need to take a stab at that as well. So now you can get a compounding effect, right? Do you guys have a favorite customer example that you think really articulates the value of together what you're delivering to customers, even, even mentioning by industry works? Yeah, you know, I think we're, we're very active together um, in a few places. Um, the first is uh, the large language model groups, right? So everyone's uh, jumping on that and you see all of the, the top 20 startups um, that everyone's well aware of in large language model space. So we're working very closely together with right. some of those. But interesting um, is we're seeing a lot of collaboration between Denver and Dell in enterprise. Right, so enterprise, whether it's uh, a digital twin of a factory, right, or it's optimizing operations and those sorts of things. The technology's starting to come there. It's early days for the enterprise, but obviously Dell is uh, if not the world leader, certainly one of the world leaders in that space in the enterprise by market share or any other measure. Um, and so we're thrilled to partner with Dell because we think there's a second wave here that you'll see beyond the research institutes and the large language model, you know, billion dollar fundings we're seeing. We're going to see regular rank and file enterprises show up and we're starting to see that. We're seeing a lot of activity from cities. Interesting. Right, optimizing transportation, right? Or the right. sewer system. Uh, or uh, citizen access with large language models. Call into the helpline, and if you can only speak Portuguese, the operator speaking English, you can now talk because a large language model's in the middle. Yeah. So we're seeing customer service applications right. like that that we're working collaboratively on all the time. Uh, I think to add to that, one of the things that I, I want to also call out is that We've all been in the AI craze, but let's not forget HPC and high performance computing and modeling and simulation that has been around for so long. It's not going anywhere. Oh, Shreya, that was so 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you see the llama walking around outside? <laughs> but in all seriousness, yeah. You know, AI has has been brought up on the backbone of, of HPC, is what yeah, I say, absolutely. from a data center yeah. aspect. And you'll still be doing inferencing, and you'll still be doing training on just the CPUs, for as an example, right? And so, this breadth of customers and the workloads, it's really not going anywhere. Yeah. AI has taken off, you know, on a trajectory of its own. So how do you, you know, service all these different customers with different needs is where you know, 
we're positioned really well to go and attack the market. Yeah, we see often conversations about AI. If you look just under the covers, you realize this is really machine learning. Mm -hmm. It's not really strictly AI. And then if you look specifically at the projects that we see CIOs and CTOs involved with, you can, you can apply that sort of 80-20 rule, at least in the enterprise, where 80% of it is sort of garden variety optimization of processes mm -hmm. that are the lifeblood of running a business. Right. So if you're a CIO responsible for keeping the lights on and innovating, a lot of your resources are going towards this keeping the lights on, running the business activity. It's never going to make the cover of the Wall Street Journal that you drove efficiency by 13% in some process, but a lot of what is called AI that turns out to be machine learning is in the op on the optimization side. The headlines are always going to be the really sexy, cool yeah, things. That's right. And and especially the kinds of things that you see here. I mean, you walk by. We've got the NSA down the down the mm -hmm. down the block here. NASA, uh, all of these institutions of higher learning. Um, but where the rubber meets the road in the enterprise, where Dell has so much experience, um, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of optimization, which there's right. nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. So with all this momentum, excitement, you're, you're moving fast and furious. Like what are some of the things that are next that we can expect to see from Dell and Denver together? I think one of the big things that um, we hope to see is more of an open standards. Um, the cooling that we talked about, the um, you know, open rack or V3 as an example, giving customers the flexibility and the choice. Yeah. We're going to continue working on that. We're going to continue. Um, we're going to continue partnering on that, and you'll see a lot more from both Denver and Dell together. Well, we will be keeping our eyes on this space. Shreya, Dave, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the program, sharing thank you. your insights, what you're doing together to really enable sustainable AI and en enable a lot of optimization for en enterprises across the globe. We we will definitely keep watching this space, thank you. Thank Great. you. Thanks for having us. Our yeah. pleasure. For our guests, I'm Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado at SC23. We'll be back after a short break.